Okay, now we'll look at the shape and line tools, and they pretty much speak for themselves. The line tool just looks like that, and it is literally for drawing straight lines. So that point will always be perfectly straight between my start and my finish. But they're not continuous, they are separate elements. Right? So if I was to go from there to there, that, as you can see, is two lines. If I wanted a shape like that, I would use the pen tool and I would create a path. Right? But that is two separate shapes. So that is the line tool. I mean, how simple was that? Of course, like the other tools, the line tool has different options. I've got the arc tool where I can create, well, an arc, like it says, a curved line. So that's that. I have the spiral tool, which creates a spiral right, for me to play with. I have the rectangular grid. See, all the names, they kind of speak for themselves, don't they? Yeah, the rectangular grid creates a rectangular grid. And the polar grid tool creates a polar grid. Really is common sense. Right? Let me just select all them and delete them. I can, however, if I click on the rectangular tool, if I am on a tool and I double click at a point, right, an options box will pop up where I could actually set the points and things. It will automatically be on the last sort of box you created or the last shape you created. It'll be exactly the same dimensions. But I could adjust this to anything. So let's put a 10 in there and this one can be 3. And I'll skew that to the left that way and let's see what happens. I end up with that shape as a result. Okay. So, as you can see, that's with all the shapes and the options within the line tool. With the shape tool, which as standard is set to rectangle, again, speaks for itself. I create rectangles. If I wanted to create a perfect square, however, I would hold down the shift key before I click the mouse. And then you can see that the proportions stay the same. Right? If I let go of the shift key, it snaps to a rectangle. Right, and I'm free to do anything I want with it. But let's say I'm, I'm at this point and I click shift again, boom, it automatically jumps to a square. Right, so that is the shape tool. I have the rounded rectangle, which gives me a rounded corner. The ellipse tool, which, like the square tool, will be free form unless I hold shift and then I get a perfect circle. The polygon tool will give you a polygon. Now, this is the tool where you might say, right, I don't want to draw a hexagon, I might literally want a polygon, or I want a triangle. So in this case, this is one where you do have to double click, and this options box will pop up, and say I want a triangle, I'm going to set the sides to three sides, and then automatically I will get a triangle. Right. I could set that to, I don't know, I have 20 sides. I don't even know what that's called. Probably something like a dodecahedron or something. Well, you can make it out. It's got 20 sides. Um, the star tool. Well, I wonder what that does. It creates stars. All right. Again, if I click, I get the options where I could have the, change the amount of points the stars have. I could adjust the various radiuses. The radiuses. One is the radius of the points of the outside of the star, and one is the radius of the points inside the star. So if I change this to, I don't know, something like five millimeters, you can see the star has changed to that type of thing. And there it is, to that. So I can get loads of different effects with the stars. The flare tool, I'll tell you what, just let me delete all these. I can drag over them to delete them. The flare is like creating a lens flare, as if you were taking a photograph. It kind of does that lens flare effect. It's um, it's not very good, to be honest. Illustrate uh, Photoshop, sorry, does it so much better within the filters, and you wouldn't really use this in Illustrator, I don't think. So generally, I wouldn't bother with it. So those are the line and the shape tools. Nice and simple.